Hey there! Today we are cooking with ketchup, vinegar, mustard, sugar, and spices. On this episode of What Do You Make of This? I'm going to teach you how to make barbecue sauce. I love barbecue sauce so much, it might actually be my favorite condiment. When you think about it, a good barbecue sauce is sweet, salty, sour, and spicy. So when you put it on any kind of protein, it really lights up all of your taste buds and basically just makes food taste better. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some fantastic barbecue sauces on the market, but when you make it yourself, you will be shocked by how quick it is, how easy it is, how cheap it is. And the coolest thing about making your own barbecue sauce is once you're comfortable with the method, you can really change up the different spices and ingredients to make it your own signature sauce. I'm going to show you how I make mine. So for a traditional American style barbecue sauce, I like to start with plain vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar. Now I'm going to make a very big batch. You can absolutely half this recipe and it will make exactly enough for one meal. By doubling it, you have enough for a meal plus leftovers. So this is two cups of apple cider vinegar and I'm just going to get that into a warm pan. So might hiss a little, no, nope, that's okay. And we will get this heating. So I'm just going to get heat up a little on my stove. Now, to that vinegar, I'm going to be using ketchup, but you don't actually have to use ketchup. Any kind of tomato product will work really well for this. So a tomato puree, crushed tomatoes. I personally like the ketchup best though because it's very smooth, but it also already has a lot of spices, some vinegar, some sugar. So what it does is it just adds an extra layer of flavor to your sauce. For me, that's the way to go. So this is one and a half cups of ketchup. I'm just going to try to gently pour that in without splashing. I usually make a pretty big mess while I'm cooking, but this is a red sauce. It goes everywhere once it starts splashing. So <laughs> try to be a little careful as you're cooking. Okay. And to this ketchup and vinegar, I'm also going to go in with some mustard. So this is two tablespoons of mustard. I'm using regular yellow mustard. You can use Dijon, grainy mustard, whatever you like. Like I said, this is really a great opportunity to customize your barbecue sauce. I like to keep it as simple as possible, and these are things that I just always have on hand in my kitchen. So try to get all two tablespoons out. Okay. And then I'm going to get that spatula out of the way. I got a little on my fingers. And I'm just going to start by giving this a good whisk, and I'm going to start turning up my heat now. So this is kind of the base for your barbecue sauce. And I know right now it looks like a very thin liquid, which it is, but as it cooks, it's going to reduce and it's going to get very thick. So I'm just going to give that a good whisk. And then I'm gonna start adding some spices. So what I have first is um, onion powder as well as garlic powder. If you plan on keeping your sauce for longer than a couple of days, I highly recommend you use dried spices for this. If you start using fresh garlic, fresh onions, things like that, there's a chance that it can start to grow bacteria and other microbes in your refrigerator. You don't want that hanging around. So it's fine to do if you're using it that day and that day only. Um, but if you're making a big batch like me and plan to keep it in your fridge, dried is totally the way to go. So I honestly, I don't really have an official measurement for this. I kind of just eyeball it and taste as I go. I'm gonna say though, based on the number of times I have made barbecue sauce, this is going to be onion powder. This is probably, for this big of a batch, about a teaspoon of onion powder going in. You can always add more or less based on your tastes. Same thing with the garlic powder. Another teaspoon going right in. Eh, that feels about right. So I'm also going to be making a nice spicy sauce because like I said, I like a barbecue sauce to hit all of your taste buds. It needs some spice. I'm using crushed red pepper flakes, but you can also use things like sriracha, your favorite hot sauce, chili powder, really anything spicy that you like can go into this pot. Through trial and error, I have found that about a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes makes for a good spicy barbecue sauce. And I've mentioned before, I like spice. So I'm going to give this another good mix just to get those spices kind of incorporated into this liquid. It's not really a sauce yet. And then to that, I am going to add some salt. So I'm going to go in with about a half a teaspoon of salt. There's already a lot of salt in the ketchup and in the mustard. So you may need to taste and adjust as you go, depending on what brand of ketchup you use, what brand of mustard you use. Uh, and then some pepper as well, probably only about a half to a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper, just to give it a little extra depth of flavor. 
Now what I have right here, it's a very thin liquid. This actually makes a killer marinade for any kind of meat that you plan on cooking, just like this. Before you start cooking it, leave it nice and cold, mix it together. Because of the vinegar that's in it, it actually helps to tenderize meat and it adds a lot of great flavor. You can also just use the liquid part as a base while you're cooking something. This way it doesn't really burn while it's cooking and it gives a really nice good crust to whatever it is that you're cooking. So very often if I'm say grilling ribs or making pulled pork for dinner, I like to reserve about a half a cup of this and just use it for marinating, for basting as I go, and then leave the rest of the sauce toward the end of my cooking. So with that in mind, to make an actual full-on barbecue sauce, we also need some sugar. So I am using brown sugar. This is two thirds of a cup. You can change up the sugar too though. You can use um, honey I've used in the past. It's really delicious. Molasses is great. Plain white sugar, agave nectar. Basically anything that's good and sweet, you can put in your barbecue sauce and it will probably be delicious. So I'm just going to get that sugar in there and just get everything really well mixed and it's already starting to get hot, I can see. So that's great. So like I said, right now it's looking very thin. It's looking very watery. That is normal, don't worry. What I'm going to do once this is well incorporated is give this a taste, by the way, before I move forward, I do want to say if you've never made barbecue sauce before, taste as you go. It's a good way to just check the seasoning and make sure you like the way things are balanced. You can always add more of something. Just remember you can't take it out again. So if you're not sure, start little, add more. Um, just remember, especially with the spice, um, like with the chili, as it cooks, it's going to continue to release the chili oils and it will get spicier and spicier the longer it cooks. So if it doesn't seem too spicy when you taste it cold, don't go adding too much because I've done that in the past and wow, did it blow my head off. <laughs> it was delicious, but it was really spicy by the time it was done cooking. So bear that in mind. What I'm going to do, bring this to a boil. I'm going to turn it down to medium and just let it boil pretty, pretty rapidly. It's going to reduce for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And once it looks like a pretty good consistency to you, again, this comes down to your personal tastes, pull it off the heat, let it sit for five minutes. And as it cools, it will thicken into a really nice velvety barbecue sauce. I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so this has cooked, this has cooled, and our barbecue sauce is now saucy. And really, if you look at the pan, you can see just how much it has reduced. It has reduced almost by half in that 15 minutes of steady boiling. I do want to call out that I did give it a stir from time to time. I've never yet burned a batch of barbecue sauce, and as long as your heat is over about a medium, it probably won't happen to you either. But just to be safe, because there's sugar in it, I do like to give it a stir just to make sure. But to show you now that it's thickened and cooled, like you've got a very beautiful, nice, thick, very smooth sauce, if you remember what it started out like. This is pretty much textbook barbecue sauce. And again, this is an American style barbecue sauce, but that's not to say that that's where it has to end. You could make an Italian barbecue sauce if you used something like balsamic vinegar and honey. If you wanted to make an Asian inspired barbecue sauce, try some rice vinegar and ginger. You could probably even make one that tasted a lot like a Mexican mole by doing chipotle peppers in adobo and some dark chocolate. So just ideas to get you started. Once you're comfortable with this method, you can change it up and experiment to your heart's content until you find some really cool combinations. So this in the pot is fine, but like I said, you can actually store it in a jar in your refrigerator for a good month or two. So I'm gonna actually get it jarred up so you can see what it looks like. It even makes kind of a nice gift almost sent my utensils flying. So just gonna make sure you can actually see what that looks like as we're filling up the jar. I'm going to use a funnel because I'm a very messy person and that's a very red sauce. <laughs> so I'll try, try to take some help where I can get it. And all I'm going to do now is just ladle this sauce into my jar. And I cannot stress enough, make sure it's cooled before you do this because you do not want a glass jar shattering all over the place. So. Yep, I've already spilled a little bit. I told you, I'm a spilly person. And this has reduced so much, I'm actually not even sure it's going to fill the entire jar. I might need to make more to make sure I've got lots left over, but let's see what we come up with here. It's still a very generous amount of barbecue sauce. That jar, what we have there is probably about the equivalent to three bottles that you would buy in the grocery store. So 
it's it's an investment worth making in your time and in your pantry ingredients because you get a lot of barbecue sauce for your buck when you make it yourself. And like I said, you can always have this recipe and just make enough for one meal, not have any leftovers, but if you're like me and you put it on practically everything, it's always nice to have a good jar of barbecue sauce just hanging around at home. And look at that, it actually filled up almost completely. Excellent. I think I've actually got a little bit left over in my fridge, so I might even just top it up and keep going because I go through this stuff so fast. So that's it. That is a beautiful barbecue sauce. You can give it as a gift. You can keep it for yourself. You can make as much or as little of it as you like. Um, my only pointer is keep it in the refrigerator when you're not using it. That will help it to stay fresh longer. But whether you want to put it on meat, whether you want to put it on steamed vegetables, I love it on broccoli, baked potatoes, french fries, pretty much anything savory, I guarantee I have tried to put barbecue sauce on it and I have loved it. So have some fun, enjoy your sauce. And this is your basic American style barbecue sauce, but you can customize it any way you'd like to. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.